Kuchisake onna tu, or as it's known in English, carved tu, the scissors massacre, is a strange, strange film. I don't know any other way to put it. This film is far, far better than it has any right to be. I'm not a big fan of the terms underrated or hidden gem, but that's exactly what this film is, and one of the very few films I can apply that term to. But why is it underrated, and what actually makes it so good? I'm glad you asked. Let's take a look. There will be spoilers throughout this review, so if you haven't seen the film yet and want to do so unspoiled, then you should probably go and do that first. As you can no doubt guess from the title, Carved 2 is technically a sequel to Carved, the slip-mouthed woman, or simply Kuchisake Onna in Japanese. This film was released in 2007, one year before Carve 2, but it's only a sequel in name. The stories have nothing to do with each other, other than the fact that they both feature a Kuchisake Onna, and not even the same one. Thus, you don't need to watch the first to understand the second. They're not related at all. I will cover the first film on this channel at a later date, but Carve 2 really is something special, so I wanted to do it first. Carve 2 was released in Japan on March 22, 2008, and stars Asuka Rin, one of my favourite actresses, in one of her very first roles. She was only 16 at the time of filming, making her the same age as the character she was portraying. Well, almost. She was actually a little younger in real life. But anyway. This is important, because the film presents itself as an origin story. This is how the legend of Kuchisake Onna came to be. And here, she's just a high school girl. Why is that important? Let's take a quick look at the plot. The year is 1978, and Sawada Mayumi, youngest of three daughters, lives with her parents in a small town in Gifu Prefecture. She has a seemingly idyllic life. Both parents adore her. Her oldest sister Sachiko is about to get married, and the second oldest, Yukie, works as a hairdresser and is on the verge of being promoted to run her very own store. Mayumi has lots of friends at school, and even the occasional boy confessing his love to her, but she lets them down gently and kindly, because her heart is set on another, Seiji, who was about to graduate this year and then move to Tokyo for university. The movie spends quite a bit of time setting up Mayumi's idyllic life, and it plays out like a fairly typical high school romance drama for the first 24 minutes of the film. For people expecting to see a horror movie, this is no doubt off-putting, and combined with the, let's just say, not fantastic acting, it's easy to see why many people would be turned off fairly quickly. Which is unfortunate, because this slow, almost dull build-up is necessary to drive home the horror that follows it. It turns out that Sachiko, Mayumi's oldest sister, and the one about to get married, has an ex-boyfriend who is less than happy with matters. He rocks up to the family home one night with the intention of burning Sachiko's face with acid, and when he finds her in bed, empties the bottle on her. Only, it's not Sachiko in the bed, it's Mayumi, who is sleeping in her sister's much bigger room now that she is about to move out to live with her husband. 17-year-old Mayumi takes a bottle of acid to the face, and when her mother hears her screams and comes running, the unhinged ex-boyfriend brutally kills her. The father then comes running with his hunting gun and, seeing his wife murdered in front of his very eyes, shoots the man and kills him. He's about to end his own life when he suddenly realises that Mayumi is still alive, but now horrifically injured. This scene comes out of nowhere and sharply contrasts with the slow, peaceful, almost boring build-up that precedes it. It's a shock to the system and a reminder that, yes, you are watching a horror film, and things all go downhill from here. Mayumi undergoes surgery, but the doctors are only able to do so much for her facial injuries, and so she resorts to wearing a mask to cover her disfigurement. What follows is an intense look at how tragedy can beget more tragedy in small Japanese towns, particularly in a time long before the internet, where gossip had to spread through actual word of mouth. 
Rumors quickly spread around town that Mayumi's father actually murdered the man and it wasn't self-defense. The other kids at school fear Mayumi and her disfigurement and call her names and whisper mean things about her behind her back. The idyllic life that the movie spent 25 minutes building up is destroyed in an instant by something that had absolutely nothing to do with her. She was simply caught in the crosshairs, literally in the wrong place at the wrong time, and now everything Mayumi has ever known or loved is falling down around her. As I mentioned earlier, Carve 2 is an origin story. It presents itself as a retelling of real events from history, using information from the Kuchisake Onna urban legend to make it seem like this is an actual story of who she was and how she came to be. It literally begins with, this film is based on actual events that took place in Gifu in 1978. If you're familiar with the story, Kuchisake Onna was said to have first appeared in Gifu Prefecture around the start of December 1978, and was then first reported in the press on January 26, 1979, just over a month later. Kuchisake Onna fever swept the nation, and people were legitimately terrified that there was a woman in a trench coat roaming the streets and killing people. Carved 2 gives you that story of how she supposedly came to be, and there are neat little easter eggs hidden throughout the film for people who are familiar with the legend. For example, Mayumi was on the track team at school until her accident, which has zero bearing on the plot, but explains why Kuchisake Onna can run so fast. She also enjoys sewing, making things for the boy she likes, and she takes this up almost full time after her accident. This explains why she has the scissors she's known for attacking with. There are also other neat tidbits, like being the youngest of three sisters, which is common across numerous variations of the legend. And, of course, the film is set in Gifu in 1978, said to be where Kuchisake Onna first appeared. Now, it's important to note that of course the film is fictional. It wraps up with a few text screens informing us that on May 18th, 1978, a serial killer killed 13 people and injured 52 others. It mentions how the culprit was likely Mayumi, an alias, of course, like all those in the film. But due to the lack of DNA testing at the time, the case remains unsolved. None of this is true, and is simply part of the story and its framing device as a retelling of true events. This mixing of fiction with real elements from the urban legend does make for a compelling tale if you're already familiar with her story though. With that said, what makes this film so good, in my opinion, is how convincingly it takes Mayumi from a happy, bright, cheerful girl at the beginning of the film to a deranged, supernatural serial killer by the end. This part isn't spoilers, by the way. If you're watching a film about the origin of Kuchisake Onna, and you don't know that the main character is going to become Kuchisake Onna by the end, I don't know what to tell you. But this also benefits the film, rather than hinders it. You know this happy girl is going to take a turn to the dark side, and it creates a sense of dread and uneasiness that hangs over the entire film. What could possibly turn this sweet girl into a frightening, literally monstrous serial killer? Well, the film does a fantastic job of showing you how she got from A to Z, and every step along the way that tore her down. Origin stories are a difficult thing to do well, but even more so for villains. It's hard to convey in such a small time limit a fall from grace that's satisfying and believable. But Carved 2 does it so, so well. Those first 25 minutes that are spent so slowly, so peacefully, so idyllically, really are necessary to drive home why everything after her accident affects her so badly. She isn't just disfigured in a random attack by her sister's ex-boyfriend. Her mother is murdered, and soon after, her father takes his own life as well. Her sisters do their best to take care of her, but they have their own lives they have to live, and they can't just drop everything for her, although they admittedly do try. They're not bad people, and they do what they can, and that makes the tragedy all the more painful. Being in high school, and, as the Japanese saying goes, 
Being the nail that sticks out because of her disfigurement, she is bullied and made fun of at every turn. Those she thought were close friends soon turn against her and act like they were barely friends at all. The boy who confessed to her at the start of the film is even teased by his friends and used to belittle her further. Seiji, the boy she likes in Tokyo, is unaware of what happened to her, but long distance can only work for so long and she knows that at some point he's going to see her face as well, and she fears that he will reject her once he does. It's not an unfounded fear, because when he returns and she removes her mask and asks him, am I still pretty? He's unable to hide his horror. He also reveals that he never really liked her in the first place, and when he gave her the button from his school uniform at the start of the film, it was only because her friends made him do it. He never liked her, not like that anyway. Only as a friend. The film spends so long carefully building Mayumi and her happiness up, so it can then knock it all down, brick by brick, until there's nothing but a shell of a person left. You'd be hard-pressed finding someone who goes through as much trauma as she does in such a short period of time, and once it starts, it never stops. You feel every brutal blow that chips away at Mayumi's humanity, Mayumi's happiness, piece by piece, until there's nothing left of her. The final straw is when her own sisters turn against her, fearing that the killer around town may actually be their baby sister. And of course, they were right. Mayumi has been so traumatized that she doesn't even realize that she was the killer all along, having done so through various disassociative episodes. But when her sisters, her literal only remaining flesh and blood, the only people still supporting her, turn against her as well, her last bit of humanity fades and Kuchisake Onna is born for real. This betrayal is too much, and even after they try to kill her, and dump her body in the woods, vengeance brings her back, and she kills them both, symbolically and literally, ending all ties she has to this world. She ends with asking her dying sister, Am I pretty? As a little boy looks on in terror, as she reveals her hideous smile to the world for the first time. This film, by all rights, has no reason to be as good as it is. The overall acting is not amazing, and at times may make you cringe with how bad it is. It's also not the most high-budget film around, and it's shot no differently to most cheap horrors you see around the place. But the story, and Asuka Rin's convincing performance as someone who is constantly beat down at every single turn, all by no fault of her own, elevate this to honestly one of the best villain origin films I've ever seen. Asuka has to spend the majority of the film with a mask covering her face, and yet manages to convey so much sadness and pain through just her eyes that it's hard not to feel depressed by the end. She didn't deserve anything that happened to her, and even if you don't agree with it, you can at least understand her turn by the end. And that is what makes it such a good film. Horror is many things to many people. Maybe to you, it's slashes. Maybe it's the lingering dread of knowing what's coming but having it constantly kept out of reach. Maybe it's monsters, or maybe it's people. The horror genre is so wide and varied, which is why I love it, and this hidden gem of a film is a perfect example of a character study conducted within a horror environment. This film is entirely about Mayumi and her descent into a supernatural killer, and the kills and scares are there to complement her story, nothing more. If you're just looking for a simple slasher, this isn't it. But if you want to experience one character's fall from grace, watch the world slowly turn them into a remorseless killer step by step, then this is the movie for you. As an interesting aside, Japanese reviews for this film are somewhat mixed. There are those who liked that the film was a character study, and not just a gory slasher, while others felt the film was badly acted and too depressing with not enough horror elements. It seems to rate just slightly higher in Japanese than it does in English, with 
A 3.9 out of 5 on Yahoo, for example, 3.3 out of 5 on Amazon, and 3.1 out of 5 on Sataya. Meanwhile, it only has a 5.8 out of 10 on the Internet Movie Database, and 2 out of 5 on Movie Meter. I'm not a big ratings person, but I think the slight difference there is still interesting. But what did you guys think about this film? If you've seen Carve 2, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'd love to hear what other people thought of it. And if you haven't seen it yet, I highly recommend finding a copy and sitting down with it sometime. It's a fantastic example of what the horror genre can do when it chooses to focus on character and not just scares. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys again next time.